Hi, I'm Larry Hibbert. Uh, here we are in my studio in Brixton, South London, which is called Stu Stu Studio. I am a guitar player and record producer. I started playing guitar when I was probably 13 or 14 um, at a youth club. I used to live out in Twickenham, a bit further out south of London, and we always used to go to this youth club called Heatham House. Um, so when we were at school, we'd go there and put on gigs and play each other's bands. And even had a little recording studio there, we'd be playing record and, and record each other's bands. So that's how I got into playing guitar. I'd even got into producing and putting on shows. Um, my first amp was a Laney, actually. It was a GC120, an old solid state thing, two two by 12 combo. And then through doing that, just doing more and more gigs through various different bands, ended up being in a band called 100 Reasons, who signed to Columbia Records in the year 2000, the very start of the year 2000. Um, and went on to do four albums and a load of touring, um, which kind of ended me up here when that stopped paying the mortgage. Um, I whipped to being a record producer. <laughs> I mean, the Sabbath was a massive influence for me when I was a kid. The first three albums, I'd say, I used to listen to all the time when we were first getting into music and being, being in bands. And obviously, Iomi's Laney usage is world famous, um, which I, mean, I can't remember exactly, but I'm sure that was a massive part of the reason why I bought that GC120. But it's probably a little, a little distance from the sort of stuff he was playing through. But you know, uh, like just having that name with you and that, that history means a hell of a lot. I've just got this funny solid state thing, which I don't know, they all, Lady Amps always, they all have a bit of mojo about them. Every single model sounds quite unique. And that, you know, like especially these funny old things, they might not be usable and everything, but sometimes they're just the perfect thing for what you're doing. <laughs> they do one thing very, very bloody well. So yeah, I've always loved them. <laughs> kind of a, a, a watershed moment for me, because it was the first album I produced on a major label, which was Marmozette's first album, uh, Weird and Wonderful. Um, I know Jack's a, a Laney player as well. I love that record. For lots of reasons, it was sort of my first, like I feel was my first step in my, my career as being a sort of proper record producer, if you want to put it like that. Uh, I'm just also really proud of it. I think it's a great album. I love the guitar sounds on it. This amp definitely was all over that record. <laughs> and a record I made a couple of years ago by a band called Dinosaur Pile Up called Celebrity Mansions. That's a record I'm really proud of. And again, that's a real guitar based record. Uh, it's all about the crunch and all about Matt's you know, great guitar player, his Explorer. Again, he's a lady player as well. He's Iron Hearts, which were definitely on those records. Because um, they only rehearsed next door, actually. So we did drag, we dragged his rig through here <laughs> and mic'd it up. So this is the LA30BL, um, which I've had now for a couple of months uh, with this lovely matching 2x12 cabinet. Um, first impressions of it are amazing. It's got that Sabbath tone that I know and love, which is also existing in this as well. As the, 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 you can hear the voicing between these two. Um, definitely, they are from the same place. Um, and I love it. It does, one thing I, one thing that was surprised to me was the sort of glassy, shimmering cleans you can get out of, like before it breaks up. There's, there's this whole world at the, at the bottom end of the master volume, which is not an area that I traditionally explore, um, which is full of all kinds of goodness, which I've really been loving. And then, obviously, because it's only 30 watts, once you get past about four, it doesn't really get any louder. It just crunches up and compresses and squashes and has this really lovely um, top, fizzy top end, which you can bring out with the presence control, um, which has been fantastic as well. The first mirror is I think it was art incredible. We had a play with it today with some of these pedals as well. Really like it. Really, on first impression, I really like the FET volume channel. It's just really solid and punchy. Um, and we've been having fun like just rolling that tilt off towards the low end a little bit just seems to give it a load more punch in the low mid and bottom end and that's a really good global control to have I think you know once you've sort of once you've played about with it got the gain setting and the volume and, and got everything working kind of how you want just having that to be able to globally go brighter or darker I think is something I'm really going to use quite a lot um, so just got hold of these pedals here from Black Country Customs. Just had a quick play about one earlier, already super impressive, especially this one. This fella, the 85 bass interval pedal, I think is ridiculous. We just plugged this in earlier with an expression pedal. And I've got a couple of octave pedals, but I don't think there's anything about which quite does what this can do on first impressions. Uh, so I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that, being having the two different octaves in the fifth interval, and then being able to use the expression pedal to, to alter the pitch as well. It seems to track really well. I don't know, that's, that's a good one. I think I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that. And this chorus pedal I'm really loving as well. So I've got a few chorus pedals here. Like with the dimension setting on this, it's, 
it has definitely has the sound of the dimension, but also has a bit more control over it about the range and, and the rate and things that you can't actually do on the original. Um, whether or not it sounds different, I mean, having that um, option to be able to control the sound a bit more, I think it's going to be great as well. Plans going forward after the pandemic are we're doing it with 100 reasons which we were supposed to be starting now, but because of the tail end of COVID and us not wanting to cancel it, if one of us gets it or the touring party gets it, we've pushed forward now to 2023. So that um, is something to look forward to and has also given me a little bit more time to learn the songs, which is good, relearn the songs. <laughs> um, so that's happening in the future. Um, other than that, I'm gonna be in here just making more records. This is where I live 12 hours a day, pretty much just making guitar music with various people that come in and out so um, that's probably going to be the rest of my year is <laughs> more recording more playing about with these pedals and these amps and that's that <laughs>